welcome all you here to the TIPFEST International Cup Theatre Festival and also this uh, seminar of exploring ways to connect while on tour or as an artist in residence. And uh, we will have a two hours time to have uh, introductions by our guests. And, um, and I will let them to introduce also themselves <coughs> soon. My name is Elina Lajunen and I'm a puppeteer and director and a part of the Aura of Puppets. And I will be a moderator of this, uh, this afternoon seminar. And I know that there's the people uh, in the internet there's because we are in, uh, in YouTube also. So welcome all the people <laughs> there and welcome you here. It's nice to meet, see you that there's so many, many people. And uh, after uh, introductions and, uh, and uh, they our guest speeches, there is the time for discuss. So you can like uh, have uh, questions, you can write them down and then you can like raise your hand or like let's be like really kind of cozy here and uh, have a conversation together after you have been speaking. And also in uh, YouTube you have a possibility to write questions to chat and Daru will pick up questions for us here. So yeah, and yeah, we will have a little break after after our guests Lena Beck and Miradonna has have an introduction about the, <coughs> their work. So we will have a short break there and after that we have this discussion. So warmly welcome and now let's do first like it's just a short tour like that you can say your name and something shortly where are you coming from to this moment. <laughs> So I'm yeah. Beck Berger. I am the artistic director of the New Theatre Institute of Latvia and the curator of the International Festival of Contemporary Theatre Harmonovis. So that is one uh, hat, an identity that I bring here today. And the other is uh, as a dance dramaturg, predominantly with uh, choreographer James Batchelor. And through the last six years of collaboration, we've toured to more than 20 countries, not just in Europe, but across Asia and Australia. Um, and yeah, as a curator and as an artistic director, I'm trying to innovate how we exchange and how we can be together as artists. What are new frames that we can find uh, with each other to meet each other uh, in a long-term sustainable way, focused on yeah, pleasurable experiences and uh, genuine connection. Um, but yeah, centered predominantly in the performing arts. Thank you and a welcome. Hi, Hi everyone, I am Lena Keller, I am a performance artist and a uh, residency director of the Sari Residence, which is maintained by Connect Foundation, here quite near by half an hour from, from the city of Turku, and, and also artistic director of an international performance art festival called New Performance Turku Bayan. Thank you. I'm Miladonna Pirka, I am freelance artist, performer, director, and also a founder of multidisciplinary art company called the Cabo Laboratory. And I'm currently in the Saari residence. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I say that. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice coincidence, and we, like, uh, I heard that it wasn't planned, so that's like <laughs> really something about for the conversation also, I think, that theme of coincidence. Okay, thank you and welcome. And uh, now we will have a like a bigger presentation of uh, of each of your works and way to to make art and way to think about this chop checked. And uh, we just uh, had order, so you can start, Lena. <laughs> thank you. So I thought that as a kind of opening remarks, I will uh, tell a bit about my own approach as a performance artist. And um, so. For a long time now, I've been thinking about um, adaptation and reduction as maybe methods for, for uh, working more in a more sustainable way. And also thinking that what would it mean to my practice if I would maybe reduce uh, the amount of production that I do or the amount of works that I do and if I would slow down the pace of the work 
And would it maybe um, help me to go deeper in the projects and in the processes? And uh, I thought to tell a bit about the, also the background. I graduated uh, from here, from Turku Arts Academy. It's across the river uh, from the place where we are at the moment. Uh, and that was the year 2003 when I finished my BA program. And at that time, uh, that was an international program for performance arts especially. So at that time, the idea was that once you are out, you will be, oh, you are international. Like that's, that's, the, that's the mindset from the beginning. Because that also collided with the time of like globalization and cheap flights. So it was also easy. I could just put my stuff, <laughs> put my objects in the luggage and go. Yeah. And, and that kind of, and work more. So that was the idea that accept all the invitations, just go make your career. And after doing that for a while, I started to think like, this doesn't make, make any sense. I'm traveling around to do my half an hour performance, touring it. And, but somehow something didn't really, kind of it didn't feel right. And, and I started to think about that if I do it, I want to rather do it in a, in, a, in a way that something would change in me mm. and my practice. So I started to look for opportunities where I could combine the trip with the residency, so I would work there and then perform the piece, or I would have a chance to collaborate with the local colleagues in a way or another. So looking for ways of like, um, if not slowing down, but like deepening the experience of being somewhere, and I started to follow that. I'm still uh, not only to, to only to perform uh, or uh, also as a curator to see works. But I think also kind of like having that as a, as a kind of uh, sort of leading principle in a way or another changed something. So um, that's one way, uh, one contribution to the conversation we are having, having today here. Um, so next, I would I would speak about the Sari residence, and I will ask our technical <laughs> people there uh, that we start with the uh, with the introduction video. So, so that would be a shortcut. You know what I'm talking about once you see the clips. <laughs> so after we watch the video, I will talk a bit more about how we work in Sari in terms of environmental, psychological and social sustainability. The Sari residence is an international art system residence for professional artists and artist collectives of all disciplines and nationalities. It is located in Munaki, Southwest Finland by the Baltic Sea. The Sari residence is maintained by Kuno Foundation and the artist in residence launched its operations in 2008. Residence is located in a peaceful rural manor near Sari Manor, close to nature, yet 30 kilometers from Turku. The river includes some 30 hectares of fields and pasture land. and scenes surroundings of an old manor house offer an excellent opportunity to cultivate and create a work of exhibition or interaction with the residents. The most important here are the residents, <laughs> the residency artists and researchers. In the this season we have individual residents coming from uh, different parts of the world and they are working here for two months doing their own projects or research. And in the summertime, we have cool residency, which means that the cooks come here, cooks uh, from three people up to 16 people come here and take over the space and, uh, and work with their own projects. The residence is intended to carry out a project proposal presented in advance. The residency place includes accommodation, a workroom, and a grant. 
doing individual residencies as their families and partners are welcome to the Saudi residents. Many of the faith in Saudi affairs is really important and we can't really underline too much how much that is really quite specific here. But after a little bit of time we're living, we're possibly developing new ways of enabling and calendar. A little bit of time so we're really embracing it very happily and we're willing to take it. One of the fundamental ideas of Saudi residents is the Saudi wealth. The Saudi wealth is based on vision and actual wealth. Throughout the ages, people worldwide have gathered around wells to collect water and in many cases they still do. Then they exchange thoughts, ideas, problems and solutions. Thus everyone gives and everyone receives, each in their turn. The Saudi residents strive <laughs> for sustainability, eco-friendliness, <laughs> and accessibility in its activities. By pleasuring sustainability, it refers to actively dismantling Eurocentricity, inequality, and unsustainability in the field of artist residency, and more broadly, the art sector, and increasing inclusivity. As you saw, the video was made um, <coughs> in the times of the pandemic. We don't do that much, or we do. We have brought uh, the remote residences as part of the, the op opportunities uh, for artists who are not able to travel for, for a reason or another. But otherwise, um, yes, the residency is happening in the place. I just wanted to correct that what's on the video. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll now talk about the sustainability and responsibility at the, at the Saudi residence as a kind of guiding principles on what we do and the values, uh, important values for what we do. Um, as the 80s and as we, as we know, uh, the IPCC's um, sixth assessment re report, which was published this year, it says um, climate change poses an immediate threat to, to human well-being and planetary health, and that's the fact. So, so we, we have, have a little time to take corrective actions. actions. That's, That's another fact. So, so yes, we, we do live in the middle of the environmental crisis, and there's, there's no way of like turning your back to the to the, those facts and and to continue the business as usual. So, so we, we need to look for solutions and uh, embrace readiness to change. So, and um, at Sari, when, when the residency started in 2008, sustainability was already important uh, in the way the residency's philosophy and activities were built. But uh, four years ago, we understood that uh, we need to do, do more. This is not enough. So we need to take new actions and find new solutions. So um, uh, we hired an uh, ecological coordinator, Jana, who you saw in the video to design a residency program for us that it's taking into account environmental, social and psychological sustainability. And um, what we did, we, like many has done, we calculated our carbon footprint. We understood, uh, yes, uh, traveling is quite a big chunk of, of the uh, carbon footprint, but also energy, material use, um, all kind of like traveling, food, recycling, all that needed to be kind of closely uh, examined and, um, and changed accordingly. So we went through the process and, but then once it was done, we were thinking that actually what we are aiming at is the, the positive effect, the, mm. the kind of the handprint instead of only looking at the the footprint. So um, we, how to enable artists and researchers to gain new insights, how to kind of flourish thinking and how to think together. And um, so also I would maybe say a few words about the, the sustainability matrix, which as I've been mentioning, it's the environment, the social and psychological, but also economical. This is something we cannot kind of 
mm. uh, leave out of the picture. It, it's part, partly there. Um, but um, so we do in our residency, we support financially uh, artists slow travel when they can travel ecologically to the residency. But we also support artists from Global South with their uh, flight costs and visa costs because um, this is the social part of the picture that mm. uh, we want to kind of um, give equal opportunities for artists to, to travel. And, and the residency world has been maybe traditionally um, um, being the world for Western artists and Western wealthy artists mm. to travel mm. around the globe. But, uh, but how, to, how to kind of balance that out is one of the important questions. And um, so we also host families and, and also work on the accessibility aspect in the residency, which is part of the picture. And, and then the, the psychological part is then that when the artists come to the residency, um, sometimes people come quite exhausted. Uh, sometimes there is need for rest or support in a way that it's not only looking at the at the outcome. Mm -hmm. So in our residency, which is not the production residency, we don't produce works. We work with the processes. That means that um, you might need to take time in order to start something new. Or, or then that what you come, what people come to the residency with, it's their practice. So uh, it might be within that kind of ecosystem of like what Beck also maybe you will talk about the. Mm -hmm. The, like showing the work, the other end, like the festivals, and also uh, also my other profession as the artistic director of the performance festival, it's about showing. But in the residency, it 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 might be the moment to kind of figure out what's going on with me and my practice, where we are at the moment, or where should we go? Where should we be going to? So uh, slowing down, taking time and uh, delving deeper into that. Um, and one, one more aspect I want to mention before I give the floor to you, and Elina, I hope I'm not going over time. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one aspect is also that the residencies are about being in a place. So that's, that's important because um, the place can either accelerate you. That's mm -hmm. what happens in the big cities. I just on Monday came back from New York uh, doing some residency visits there too. And there the residencies are about connecting and finding new kind of inspiring, um, inspiring works or kind of seeing as much as possible. Whereas in, in Sari residence, which is a rural place, it's more turning inwards. But when you do that, you're also connecting with the place and uh, with the others, the other beings, the other residents, but also the other, other humans, other modern humans and other species um, sharing the place with you. So that is also partly maybe ho helping in, in this process of slowing down and noticing. Um, and I think that's also um, kind of contributing to the discussion we are having today because it's a challenging thing to do. Slowing down is not easy. And uh, as, as kind of everything else around you is more accelerating the speed uh, uh, that we are living, as mentioned, we are living not only in the middle of the ecological crisis, but various crises. And then again, digitalization, that's also the tool which is made, made uh, us to speed up. So what are the methods and uh, ways of like slowing down and, and practicing noticing? is maybe what us in the residency are at least trying to mm, courage, encourage and uh, make a platform for. So yeah, that's my part for the start. Thank you. Let's like digest and breathe that information and, and uh, make a book, bookmark for the things where you want to ask more and, and uh, then we give us time for you. Thanks. And I just want to say I'm really excited to be <laughs> a resident. Uh, and this idea of just, uh, yeah, I wrote rest into my application because I was like, I know this year is going to be a total uh, energy um, exhauster. 
and the idea of like I've just been waiting mm -hmm. for this November like so <laughs> much of just like okay I know I can do this hardcore work this year because I have November December to disengage and mm -hmm. yeah it's, it meant that this year was possible so without this time I don't think this year could have happened and we'll talk a little bit about what's happened this year um, with the slideshow <laughs> I say that I have been also in Saari residence, so I feel really like, uh, because they are all there and uh, I have been there 2009, so a long time ago, but I have uh, like, a, like a feeling about that. <laughs> also that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like I mentioned, uh, I have multiple identities and uh, uh, also I realized uh, I didn't explain my accent. I'm Australian, but I live in Latvia. This is always <laughs> something that keeps people occupied far longer than it should, so I will just say it. Um, uh, this uh, uh, is a wonderful example of a residency and invitation, again, trying to make a sustainable outcome. So this man in a bright orange cap, this is Keith Hennessy, who's a, a kind of a legend of the uh, San Francisco dance scene. Uh, this was 2021 at our festival center, Vidzmas Tirkus, and the invitation to Keith was, I can't put anyone but you. Would you be happy to do an open studio and just make something for our closing ceremony with two weeks of an open studio? I don't know if anyone will come. I don't have any resources apart from lights, but I've got money from the US Embassy. I've got your flights, I've got your accommodation. Are you up for it? And Keith said, absolutely. <laughs> and this uh, final ceremony went for three hours, actually. And this felt super risky. This was 21 September, right? We're holding hands. <laughs> and uh, uh, looking at each other in the eye. And uh, it was this, I mean, this is the final part of the performance, but uh, he ended up working with something like 60 people who would come in and out of his open studio during the day, and they all came together to perform, and then the audience also became part of that. So a lot of our invitations, particularly with international artists, um, often have to be quite inventive because of um, my least favorite co collaborator, Money, <laughs> uh, who often is not, uh, working so hard for me. So we, we invent new ways of having uh, in-residence experiences with artists to make glorious things with local audience and local artists. So the impact of that residency and Keith being, if anyone knows Keith, you know that this magical uh, unicorn, his, his impression, that handprint continues on and influences people's practice because of having been in that proximity of his practice and then having this kind of glorious performance. Next slide. This is our logo. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so the New Theatre Institute of Latvia uh, is uh, an NGO. Uh, it has been around with the festival since 95. And if anyone uh, understands the history of the Baltics, this is hardcore. Uh, we regained independence in 91. So to have an international organization from this point is super cool. We work uh, with lots of different kinds of ways with performing arts and artists. Uh, I'm not reading this, so you can read that and listen to me at the same time. Uh, we develop art and artists locally in and around the performing arts and this uh, idea of being on the precipice of what is possible in innovating performing arts with the rootedness of theatre. Um, we work in theatrical spaces, in the countryside, we also work decentralized, so we also work throughout the country. We host internationals, we invite Latvians abroad, and we try and make memorable performative experiences. Um, one of the things that um, I'm very much interested in is these long-term lovers. You know, how can we create uh, particularly international relationships with artists <coughs> and institutions and uh, places that are not one-night stands? <laughs> but long-term mm. relationships. Because when we think about sustainability, for me, it's much more pleasurable to be in a relation, long-term relationship <laughs> with someone, growing with them, and getting to understand and going deeper. Um, and and it, at the end, uh, we think about reciprocity, also this investment. When you're in a relationship, you kind of get to know someone, ah, I have this opportunity, ah, I have this opportunity, and things mm. become a lot easier. Up there, we'll talk about our teenage curators. We trained 10 teenagers to be international festival curators. <laughs> uh, and then here is uh, me singing uh, Total Eclipse of the Hearts uh, with Queer Yoki and their uh, German uh, artist group, Queer Yoki, uh, who worked with the Baltic Drag King Collective for two years in a row in the festival. Next slide. 
So these are actually just some of the international projects we work on. Um, it's a big list and we are a small team. Um, our biggest project is Homo Novus, the International Festival of Contemporary Theatre, which is the largest performing arts festival in Latvia. Um, but we also have other kind of international projects. So uh, the Baltic Takeover, the Shakedown and the Festivals Path, which I'll talk about now. Um, these are self-initiated um, projects. Um, so they're new structures that we've invented. And then we also have five, currently five Creative Europe projects. So structures that we are writing towards European structures. But again, each of those uh, European projects are around how do we change production and make things more magical and sustainable. And then we have lots of networks. Uh, networks are also as a tool of um, finding solidarity and pleasure and uh, knowledge exchange within an industry that um, formal education sometimes lets down <laughs> and informal education and exchanging with each other is incredibly important. So me and Maradona met through some of our circles, which we've been a part of for two years, which is a network of artists and presenters who have got together to try and fix our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> like it's really sweet actually, like a, the Circus and Performing Arts yeah. Network and we were joking about this the other night, like most of these people I would never meet normally uh, or be friends with and now we have got this like cool gang of folks. Our youngest member is like 22 and our, our oldest member is 63 I think. Yeah. So super wide age range. And then we are from every Baltic country but Estonia and every Nordic country. So it's quite a, a large spread. Um, and then also just again, I have to out myself. I'm also a board member of IETM. So the largest, uh, largest performing arts network in the world. So I also work in a lot of advocacy to try and change these systems from you know, inside the big the big institutions. Now, I'm also interested in how not to reinvent everything, but to um, invade <laughs> and then make shifts from the inside. I think it's we're very much on um, we're very much in a press uh, um, a paradigm shift with I think within our uh, production of, of making performing arts globally. I think when we talk about the slowness, when we talk about equity, when we talk about equality and representation, we are not there yet. <laughs> We are like at this point, no, we just need small people to come on outside, no, to tip it over. Uh, but I think we also need to not reject the large institutions, but bring them over and convince them uh, that, the rev you know, that we make the revolution irresistible, basically. Um, next slide. Ah, so the festival, this is maybe the interesting thing that people want to hear about. So Homo Novus is the largest performing arts festival within the Baltic region. Uh, we invite the Castelluccis, and this year we had Gob Squad. We also do a lot of commissions for the festival, but often in very different ways. So up top we have uh, the incredible Chiara Bassani, an uh, Italian choreographer and disability activist. She uh, wanted to make a work in nature, uh, this work around actually the natural space being the most violent space for a body with a disability, a disabled body, and particularly someone that uses a wheelchair. She had never experienced the idea of being alone in a forest, had no relationship to this poetry. So we found the only place in Latvia, in Lipa, that had an accessible space. <laughs> and it was this very expensive hotel. Uh, but we went there anyway, and we spent two weeks in, <clears throat> in June of last year. And then from that research, she did an installation within the festival, which has then gone on to evolve into her brand new hit show, Soto Bosco, which is touring all around the world now. Um, we, uh, uh, we also have yeah, folks like Gob Squad. So, for example, Gob Squad, uh, which is a quite well renowned contemporary uh, theatre company from Germany and the UK, um, we invited this year to do a, a show, but um, we weren't going to stop there. This invitation for even companies like Gob Squad is to stay longer and to also contribute then to our local environment. So they hosted a festival school, which we host every year, which is an offering to an artist or artist group to make a school, whatever that is. <laughs> so Gob Squad decided to make a, a thematic school on families and how to make families, which ended each day in a, a showing at the festival center, which was 
super fun and I can talk about that separately alone later because it's mm. quite complicated, but this is tattoo is actually from that, um, <laughs> from that experience. Um, and you know, the, the year prior we had uh, Latai Tamapiao and Brian Fathlava, who then also ran a, a school around monuments from a Pacific Islander indigenous uh, perspective on the city and had this walking practice. We had Teareka Hapoya uh, come in 21 and lead a walking practice from Sest to Segulda, which is across the country. She had 15 artists and she walked across the country with the artists and her dog, if you know her dog. Um, uh, so the school also is one of these methodologies. Um, this year we had, my God, I think we had more than 300 performers in this year's festival. Some of them, about 177 were children uh, who helped us write a new book for the city, um, which I can offer some of you after this. Mm. But it's uh, yeah, quite a large scale um, international festival and we are constantly trying to find new ways of presenting performing arts while still maintaining the spectacle shows in the theatres, but also infecting the city and uh, mm. finding new ways to be together. And then we have a video, so you can see actually what I mean. This is of this year. This was a brand new opera about three birds that have become uh, instinct, uh, uh, instinct, yeah, in the last uh, 10 years. So this year our festival centre was in an old casino which we mm. rented for three months to offer local artists the chance to make something new for a place, so also uh, inviting place. And a big focus for us is around accessibility, radical accessibility and representation. So uh, mm. we also, uh, uh, yeah, we also work with many different members of the community, deaf, uh, low vision, blind community and folks we have that use wheelchairs or just identify as disabled and really putting that at the forefront of everything we do. The artists that we work with locally are from the first performance to someone's last performance, now that we work across also age and experience quite um, magically. This year 70% of the program was also free. Um, and that's uh, a way of also inviting very different people into our festival. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. And also this year, I'm very proud, we had someone from every single continent, which is mm. quite radical because we don't have many embassies uh, in the world uh, as Latvia. Uh, this year, we also hosted an international symposium uh, for a European project called Art Beyond Participation which looks at uh, different ways of creating, that's the mayor, he came, uh, different ways of inviting different parts of society into making work and equally, so not making work on a community, but with and for and uh, in co-authorship with communities. So, um, super fun. This was this amazing line dancing work from Mara, uh, who's Italian. There's never an invitation, but in the end, everyone within the, the whole performance area joins in. There's nothing, no one says anything, but the idea of also inviting and creating inviting spaces which people feel like they can be free and be themselves. Um, A lot of this video is parties, but it, that, that's just because that's what we filmed. No, there's, lots of like, <laughs> there's also lots of shows with the, in theatres as well. Um, but so, yeah, so that's kind of a, a, maybe a sample of kind of uh, 
the, the big kind of project that we do. Mm. But if I get the next slide, I can actually uh, talk. No, that's next, next slide. Um, talk a little bit about kind of these, um, what I will also be doing my research on <laughs> while I'm here at Saudi because I haven't had mm. time to uh, think about anything or write anything down. Yeah, good. If you touch the, the Baltic takeover one, then, yeah. Super. So Baltic takeover was, uh, it took over Helsinki in June. Don't know if you noticed. Um, we took over all of your performance spaces, uh, Helsinki. <laughs> uh, but Baltic takeover was a project that uh, uh, I initiated because I was quite shocked when I arrived in Latvia that uh, across the borders in the Baltics, we were not collaborating with Estonians or with Lithuanians. And I thought this was a bit ridiculous, if I'm completely honest. And at that time, I was in residence at HIAP. Uh, I was making work with Amantalo, for those who uh, don't know where Amantalo is. Mm, and I was living in Kapeli. So I was able to access a lot of, uh, make friends, a lot of Finnish folk, and particularly in Helsinki, uh, it was also COVID times. So Baltic Takeover, uh, basically, I, I started with the Finnish partners and said to my friends at Kiasma and Viurus and Madhouse and uh, uh, Amantalo, uh, all the tin foes and the dance in foes. Hey, would you give me your space? No questions asked, no money exchanged, June 23. And everyone said yes. <laughs> and so then I went to build about this Baltic relationship, which was with the New Theatre Institute of Latvia, with Knuti Gildisal in Tallinn, and then the Lithuanian Dance Information Centre in, in Vilnius. And what, the reason I mentioned this is that we also knew that if we were going to take over Helsinki, we had to fall in love with each other and each other's practices. So in the lead up to 23, to this year, in 22, we had four residencies, one in each of our countries. And the invitation was then to the host country was to host, <laughs> to, be hospi to give hospitality. So we started New Baltic Dance in Vilnius and uh, we did workshops with each of the artists uh, who were Lithuanian to understand their physicality and to their understanding. We then invited everyone to come to Latvia, to the forest, where we ended up seeing lots of karaoke and uh, uh, going uh, mushrooming and, and kind of into this more uh, natural space. We then went to Estonia to a Balta Scandal Festival, another international festival, and then ended up being in Helsinki in November, almost precisely this time last year. And that low, slow falling in love with no pressure of making, right? So we all knew that we were gonna have our own shows in uh, June 23 shifted how we could take over Helsinki. Because it meant by the time we got here, we all loved and trusted each other, and we just brought a vibe. <laughs> so it also really invited a very different way of the city reacting to the work that we were making. Heidi wrote this amazing article about it. You can speak to her uh, about it. Um, but this is one format. And now with Baltic Takeover, we are going to try and take over other cities around the world. No? Again, developing this slowly and with love and trust means that the whole, everyone's ready to go. We're, we're ready to take over the world. Sorry, I, I know I'm going too long, but uh, two more examples. So next slide um, uh, is the shakedown. So another one of the issues that I identified when I arrived in Riga was that, um, uh, that you know, artists uh, after the academy weren't thinking about the international in such a radical way. So thinking long term, I thought, what more radical than actually inviting teenagers to become international festival curators? And then they will never accept no again. They'll never not believe that they cannot direct an international festival. So um, uh, with Alexander Roberts, uh, who runs uh, Rosendahl Theatre in Trondheim, uh, we started to design this project. Uh, it was an 18-month training project, so we employed a lot of mentors as well. So Marta Kell from Poland, Sonia Lodki from Prague, myself, Alexander Roberts, uh, Santa Remare, and also Alza, uh, based in Trondheim. We all worked with 10 teenagers, five from Norway and five from Latvia, to create two international festivals. <coughs> so they curated the final weekend of Homo Novus last year and then curated the majority of the program in Bastard uh, last year. And they're good guys. Like they were like, 
We want Lena Lapalate, who, if anyone knows Lena, yeah, Lena performed in Trondheim because the teenagers uh, curated her. This is after she won the Gold Lion at Venice. No, it's just like, they're very good. Um, and uh, this finished in June of this year, but even now, like out of the 10, they are just already thinking about the world completely differently because they are not restricted by what they're told, what they cannot do, because they've got the tools um, to do a lot more. And again, the slow, soft, this was once a week. Uh, and then we had two long residencies, one in Trondheim and one in Latvia. Again, uh, to, to get to know each other, to trust each other, to fall in love. I, I say this quite broadly, but for me, this is important. Uh, and I think, so, I mean, some of them are already still working together. And actually, I employed most of them on the festival this year, like paid employees, <laughs> because they're good, like uh, much better than some uh, university graduates. So, um, yeah, there's a super cool website if you want to have a look and also hear about them from themselves rather than just me, who's like this proud art mum. So <laughs> and then lastly, uh, I wanted to talk about, I can't remember, Festival's Path. This is maybe the most relevant to Finland because it's with Auntie Festival. So uh, with Auntie and uh, with the previous director, Johanna, uh, we, um, again, we're like, why is there all this like weird exclusivity stuff and not sharing and not thinking about working less. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And uh, in, secretly in 21, we collaborated, and didn't tell anyone. We actually co-curated a work at exactly the same time. And again, working less, yeah, working smarter, not harder. Uh, it, this was a phone call work uh, by US artists, uh, um, 600 highwaymen that required, yeah, two strangers to meet on a phone call. Corpio is super small, Riga is super small. We know there's no strangers. <laughs> so actually it solved the problem of strangers. And as a festival, it's cheaper to employ people in Latvia. So we took the costs of employing people. So we invested an extra 3,000 than Auntie Festival did. And I said to Johanna, you take the next one. No, you take a little bit more next time. And then she came back with this amazing big funding <laughs> from the Finnish Ministry of Education and Culture, which is a funded two years of us connecting um, with the festival's path, which ensures artists two weeks or two gigs in a row with our festivals back to back. So through this uh, project, we've been able to commission new works and existing works of six, seven artists now in two years, um, including this uh, uh, O Europa did a special um, making, uh, collecting love songs from Riga through the small villages up to Corpio, uh, and they made a concept album. Also the Book of Riga, we made the Book of Corpio, so that was a collaboration with more than 300 children uh, across both cities. Um, we also had Electron from Estonia create outdoor radio, pirate radio station. Deep soulful sweats, <laughs> there's lots of things. And we're hoping that the Kone Foundation uh, continues our funding. <laughs> we will find out in a couple of weeks. <laughs> But we want to extend this because we realized it's so much nicer for everybody to work less. <laughs> like we have one production meeting for two festivals. This is better for the artist, better for the festival. One marketing copy, then we just translate. Like it just has been so much, so much nicer. Uh, and hopefully we then extend it with Estonia. And this becomes a model which also goes against the current paradigm of exclusivity, of, you know, thinking we can't share artists or all this stuff, but it's been, it's super. Thank you, Finnish Ministry of Culture and Education. It's been super nice. And when we, call, when we talk about this other core uh, aspect of financial sustainability, uh, in Latvia, we don't have these kind of grants of that size. So when we talk about this financial redistribution and fairness, uh, having a grant of over 200,000, just coming from Finland, we don't have to contribute anything from Latvia. This was magical. No? So I think, um, yeah, this is uh, something we hope to continue. But yes, I've gone over, haven't I? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> <what else. laughs> I think it's, it's okay. Yeah. But I think in the core, it's like always trying to find these new methodologies mm. Mm. where everyone's having a better time. <laughs> like, uh, it, it sounds uh, radical, but uh, I, I think coming to Europe, I was so shocked that, uh, again, fresh Australian eyes, like five years ago, I was like quite shocked that lots of countries didn't speak to each other or there wasn't that thing of like, you know, in, as an Australian artist being flown from Australia and then doing mm -hmm. one gig and it's like, but have you 
asked anyone else around. Ah, I didn't think about this. It's like, oh, we just did six tons of carbon to get here. Like, uh, yeah, so I think that it's also that thing of actually as artists, we need to demand on structures. It can't just be the offering of structures. It's also that thing of going, well, actually, if I come from this distance, please talk to your friends because I'm sure mm. they will say yes. No, like you know, there, is, there is ways of doing this sometimes, yeah. I think that's all for me. Thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's like you were speaking like a, a, a slowness and, and, and working like a, like a slow and a long term, but it's like, oh, there's so much happening. Yeah, there's so much happening. Like, and the thing is, it's like, uh, this is what we did this year. Yeah, well, but maybe when you have that kind of like a long term uh, thought, it's like you can also be effective and things, a lot of things can happen in a short time. Like yeah. When, so I think so. Relating. I, I think it's also that thing of uh, mm. a lot of this was planned a while ago. Um, mm. And this is why I applied for Saudi last March, because I knew all this was going to happen this year. <laughs> like I already knew that all of this would happen. And uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think a lot of folks don't even think that about these uh, circuit breakers or these moments of going, okay, if I am going to like try and move a mountain, well, I have to also think about how then to rest because mm. the sustainability of us all <laughs> relies on mm. us surviving uh, physically and mentally. And I think, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just buying some time. Well, <laughs> no, it's yeah, but thank you. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> okay, no. Oh. Yeah, maybe we have a little shake. <laughs> oh, we can shake all a bit. <laughs> It's easier to talk when your <laughs> blood is circulating. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so, hi. I'm going to talk today about mindset of connection in my own artworks and beyond, and also in Recover Laboratory artworks. So, what is Recover Laboratory? It is a multi-art company that I founded in 2014, officially in 2016, actually here in Turku. Uh, I was studying here at Circus. And yeah, it's a multi-art collective based in Helsinki right now. And we, our works are based on contact between people and honesty and freedom provided by art. And I like to say that our artworks are like daily life moments where glitch happen when you're like, huh? And then you jump in. You have a double check when you're walking and then you have, and then you jump in. This is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is it exactly? So they can be underground labyrinths. We just did one in Kakola wastewater treatment plant. So I have quite a special relationship for different places in cities. Like I know a lot of wastewater treatment plants and uh, industrial buildings where I build labyrinths. And they can be also routes designed for urban spaces and also multi-artworks multi in traditional stages and black boxes or installations and digital encounters. And Recover Laboratory is run by me and visual artist Sophie Häkkinen and experienced designer Inna Huttunen. And we work together with the Recover Laboratory family that is consisting of like 15 artists from different art fields. And all the core of everything is a feeling of being seen and heard, which mm. I think is super important. And I was thinking like, which video should I show you? And I, um, I decided to show you a video from 2020, COVID times. Um, yeah, here it comes. It's, the voice disappeared again. Are you hearing anything? No. Okay, one moment. I put it from my laptop, so you have to feel the bass inside you. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
this is where I stop the video. Uh, because I really like the second sen sentence. Art plays an important part in society and it has to find new ways of action also in the time of crisis. And this is what is actually like in the core of my daily life and also my artistic practice and also recovery laboratory. That I hope that after seeing my artworks, uh, the ones who were there would feel active more than passive, that the actions matter, that we can actually, like I founded the whole recovery laboratory to be able to have like a relationship, not be alone somewhere far mm -hmm. out in the like uh, stage. So that's why I wanted to do that and that's my aim and that's why I'm doing like anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I think especially now, like, because we create experiences and we know when you have an experience that makes change. If it's like goes inside you. So, yeah, how do we do it? Uh, here is a very simple, in, like uh, simple steps how recovery laboratory works with the audience con like uh, audience con connection. We uh, design the audience journey all the way from very, very beginning until the end, if the end ever comes, because we stay in contact with our uh, audience members, uh, also in social media, in WhatsApp, in Google Drive, and it's like, it's like friendship. Like we get to know each other and then we don't talk for months and then we meet up again. And we, that's like how I think uh, the relationship. So first we have the introduction, like, hi, my name is this and this, and yeah. And we are quite good in verbalizing instructions inside a performance, because I think it's quite lame to have the instructions like, don't talk in the audience, blah, like blah, blah, blah. I like to say like, don't read the show or something like this for the, like, to uh, provoke a bit, but still be like, uh, how to say, like daily life. I also work a lot with awkwardness. I wrote my uh, whole like master's thesis about awkwardness. So like, I like to <laughs> play with this a lot. Yeah. So, uh, and then it's the entering. Usually the entering, I call it in Finnish humpsahdus, the glitch thing that I was explaining, that the connection can happen when you uh, kind of the situation is real, but you go from daily life to somewhere. It can happen through sound or through introduction or, yeah. And then it's the journey. The journey can that someone is sitting in the audience or actually like following a path where you, uh, where you witness and enter to artworks and performers. And then in the end, people usually gather, ending with the final ritual and the ritual can be for example, sitting together and listening to the soundscape that the audience and the participants made together, that's part of the performance. And then we like to say that we take, do the aftercare thing, so we have the like cup of tea and this. And this is actually from my artist statement, raw of human connection, and people are like, raw, raga, what, what is this? So I like to use the, it's like unpolished connection, like, like, yeah. And these are the three things that I think it's consisting of, like honesty and curiosity, also being able to be vulnerable, and consent, and relatable and surreal. Talking about honesty, yeah. So uh, to be able to be honest and to be able to like connect with people, I think there has to be space for vulnerability and space for everyone to exist as you are, both for the audience, but also for the performer and the combination of this. And this, I also think in general in life, <laughs> like it's not only a performance and audience, but it's also like meetups in general. Yeah, and I think 
as a professional performer, I, especially when doing one-on-ones, you have to be aware of assumptions and challenge your own assumptions. If you meet someone in one-on-one -on -one performance to like create space, you can like you can script something, but you can't script a meeting. Like mm -hmm. there has to be mm -hmm. space for the other person to exist. And that is what I think like is very valuable for me and what is interesting and what it makes what I keep on doing my <laughs> things. Like it's super interesting. I'm mean, generally like I love people and <laughs> I love to m meet up and find out who people are. Uh, yeah, situation is always real. This is a real situation, even mm. though we are here mm. and you are there. Mm. It's not like perfor performed or script. <laughs> yeah. Value based. Yeah. And then one of my favorite things to like state out is the understanding that there are as many realities present, uh, present as there are combinations of people in the space. So now, for example, how many realities mm. there's so many and like mm. to appreciate them all and have space for them to exist. Mm. This is like something that I like to think. Yeah. OK, this is blurred because no internet, but it's, it's OK. You can imagine what's <laughs> <all this. laughs> so, so we use a lot of different communication tools with the audience to connect, which means also smartphones, also like uh, um, discussions. And typically, we ask questions. And here you can see a photo of Sideways Festival. Uh, where people, the festival goers, are entering to a big stage, but he, there is hovering um, like hundreds of unsaid, um, unsaid sentences. It's saying, I miss you and I don't either love you anymore, mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like this. So the festival goers, they went to an old co computer and wrote down what, the, what the, they leave unsaid. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, ask if you don't hear. Yeah. Uh, consent is essential when working with anyone or people, <laughs> like, yes, it's essential. Uh, yeah. We also teach, uh, try to teach for, uh, consent for the audience member also. That, for example, if you want to touch a performer, you can, but you negotiate first. Negotiate first, and when the negotiation happens, then anything can ha happen, and that's like beauty. I have been uh, witnessing so like various type of connection, and uh, they can go really far if the like limits are clear. So this is what we do a lot. And relatable and surreal, this is one of my favorite things. So because I have the uh, circus background, so I have a lot of opinions about tricks. So I think <laughs> trick, <laughs> trick is good if you want to catch an attention. But if you want to start an equal conversation, would you start with a trick, <laughs> like backflip? <laughs> <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, so what do I do? Uh, I try to aim for physical relatableness. And then I ask, actually ask in some of the performers, like, are you looking for a trick? Like, and then they ask like, oh, actually, yes, I <laughs> came because it said it's circus. And then I'm like, okay, what kind of circus you do want? And I have the hoops here, I can maybe, and then we have the negotiation. I love <laughs> this moment. Some people said like, okay, this is enough, I don't need to see the trick. And some people say like, yeah, Leh. and then I do the show. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I really like these moments. So, uh, yeah. And then I wrote a little bit of the communication. I try to do direct communication, especially with the audience, no art explaining. Except if it's an art audience, <laughs> then <laughs> we do that. And as I said, we use daily life communication tools like we WhatsApp. 
inside our performances, also through voice messages and we use anonymous chat rooms where we ask personal questions like what did you do to not be in love? And when you're mm -hmm. anonymous, people tend to answer. And yeah, then I have a whole Google Drive folder with different questions and answers and part of the performances. Um, yeah, and also we use non-screen things to connect. Like sometimes we ask to look in the eyes for one minute Mm -hmm. and hold hands, mm -hmm. shout, whisper. It's very situation. We, we tried many things. We even wrote love letters in one and sent them and different styles of like communicating. communicating. Yeah. And I would like to end with one thing that I is I think it's very important to say that I think uh, when you enter the space, it's already action and it's already statement. It's a statement that you came here. I'm happy that you came. And I think um, like everyone are responsible of the shared moments, like even the ones who are sitting there. If I would say something terrible, I really hope that you would even I know it's like <laughs> it's not usual in Finland to uh, start uh, stand out it's very hard but I'm like yeah let's do it <laughs> this is like what I want to do and as I said I work with QR code so maybe you can go there if you feel like and thank you thank you awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Miradonna, Lena and Beck. And I, I have to say that uh, like, like uh, I have been uh, t mm, taking part of a few residencies, like uh, official residencies and also traveling and like making residence out of <laughs> that time when I've been spending somewhere. And uh, I got to say like kind of a similar feeling that this inspiring, ins inspired feeling now when I was hearing you and, and that's your know, like huge uh, words and things what you brought here in this this moment and I, I kind of feel that's something at least for me what what what, what is the like um, like essence of, of of going residencies and collaborating and meeting different people and and uh, get to just know different worlds what people present presenting and the and the places are presenting and be like open because I didn't like I read something about you and like uh, was looking some things but not not really so I was like, oh wow, these kind of things and universes. So I think that's 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 uh, this this love and respect and and that kind of thing. So I'm I get I, I'm inspired at least. <laughs> I hope you you are also inspired. And let's have now like short five minute breaks to to go out of toilet or whatever, and uh, and then we come back and let's like then have a you have a questions and you can have questions also yeah. and so yes yeah. break and welcome back there's one bathroom in here and there's also one bathroom in the other as well it's, uh, it's going to become too dark when i close this <laughs> I, will, I will ask if, if, if you can put some light i will ask about the light because yeah. i also feel that it's too dark <laughs>
Mm. <laughs> now we have some now we look like we're in a, <laughs> it looks like we're in a TV studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, we're actually in a talk show. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask, like, uh, from uh, from you people there. I don't say our audience because I, I try to kind of connect us to be like, uh, how many how many of you have been, uh, for example, uh, uh, well, artist residence or or other kind of like uh, residence place. Quite many. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, many, many. How, how many have been to Saudi? How many to Saudi? <laughs> oh, at the moment. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some people probably at this moment. So how many of us are right now in Saudi? <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> so. Great. <laughs> this is the new citizens of the region. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Temporary citizens. Yeah. The population of Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and I want to right away, uh, like, kind of take take you with us uh, also in a way that if you have a questions, I'll, uh, some thoughts, what came uh, came to you, like uh, during the when they were speaking here here about the um, Beklena and Miradonna. So, do you have uh, like right right away something? But yes, please, Ismail. You have a lot of experiences, uh, <laughs> touring and uh, residencies. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, we have a oh, microphone. Oh, that's wow. that's, I will, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it's not for us, it's for the internet. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I don't even know. Ah, yes, for the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, yeah. internet. Uh, for, first of all, thank you for uh, the presentations um, as former resident. Uh, in Sare, so, so I knew quite uh, well about what Lena was presenting, but uh, anyway, hi Beck. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, thank, thank you both, Miradona and Beck, uh, because a lot of new, new things for me and very inspiring things. Uh, I thought just um, to uh, share with everyone, um, in a way, a similar, uh, well, a project that uh, with my theater, Grus Grus uh, Theater, um, we have been uh, working on this year and we are continuing with, and this is kind of uh, um, comes on the same, it, it's revolving around the same subject of sustainability in art production. And uh, yeah, so I will just present it. Uh, it's um, it's called Akilahdot uh, to Retour, which you can translate it maybe to English as I don't know, is it, is it last minute uh, flight or what is it like charter? If somebody, someone with better English uh, and knows also <laughs> Finnish or Swedish, <laughs> you can translate. But okay, yes. So anyway, the the yes, yeah, okay. So uh, the idea is that we we issued uh, a series. Um, we define ourselves as a, a, a mental or spiritual flight company, and um, we regard all well all shows as uh, trips and travels. Um, and this is uh, this we have been doing for um, many years. But uh, this year we started with that specific project that uh, really revolves our, around um, interfering with the the industry of tourism, how it is built, and uh, like opening, re-questioning the, the idea of uh, tourist trips and the way that the, I would say like the dramaturgy of, of the conventional tourist uh, uh, trips where people are uh, being advertised uh, and they, they buy this kind of trip where basically uh, you physically you travel so you you use all the resources different on different levels but um, mentally um, mentally spiritually um, you are try to stay in your place as much as possible so the whole industry is based on this that um, in conventional tourism people uh, 
they, they know exactly what they will get. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, mm. so I don't need to elaborate on this. Um, so um, we um, issued this kind of uh, series of, we said that this year we work as a travel agency and we try to, we are offering different uh, trips. Um, so we had several different shows. Uh, each uh, show was a trip guided by one uh, tourist guide uh, from, from our company. So the disciplines that we work with are very different, uh, like from circus to contemporary puppetry and dance, whatever. Uh, and the, the trips were all made in the, in the area of Turku, but they were very different. Uh, so we had one uh, hand-holding uh, trip. So it is a choreographed, uh, hand-holding um, through the center of Turku and uh, where the, the tourist uh, get to, by holding hands in different combinations, uh, get to travel like uh, socially and emotionally and, and geographically, this one thing. And then uh, another trip, uh, again, completely different, uh, Turku, Hiroshima, Udin, Keskusta, like that, it was about um, the same bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima then is dropped now on uh, Turku in, um, and uh, we just uh, we take a trip through uh, from the Turku castle uh, all through the different <coughs> circles of destructions and um, yeah so this is this uh, takes you also on yeah in a different way mm -hmm. um, and another trip uh, for example in in contemporary um, museum, uh, like the, so it was a, a trip through uh, works of, through painting, uh, art paintings and, and, uh, so, and, and others also. Um, and, and the idea is to really, really offer people the possibility to, to really travel <laughs> uh, while actually they, they never get out of <laughs> this city. Mm. Um, and uh, we are still, th this was like piloting this year, but uh, we will continue next mm. year with some of the trips that uh, we already had and some new trips. So this is kind of uh, ongoing also. And, and then we are learning, our dream is to, we, we learned quite a lot about the production side uh, of this, uh, how difficult it is. To, to get uh, to get audience and uh, also funding uh, for this kind of things because it kind of falls in between definitions. Mm -hmm. It's not mm. enough uh, theater, but mm. but but then again, you cannot really get money from the tourism uh, kind. Of, uh, mm. I don't know organizations. Mm. Mm. Our dream is that uh, Turku touring or one of these like or the city of Turku uh, that really you know, uh, uses uh, the taxpayers' money in order to, to, like, sell the city for tourists, that they will have it in their repertoire, just as they have mm. other things. And then that it can be expanded. Um, it doesn't need to stay, like, within our theater, but it can be expanded, expanded as a practice. So that can be used by, uh, by artists mm. uh, because yeah, art is the best travel um, uh, travel machine. I don't know how to. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's it. Just want to to share this. And somehow, somehow, like uh, um, uh, that kind of that kind of it has a similar thing than Miradona's project, mm -hmm. this Gallia walking, and uh, and you can you can like see even in the pictures, and then uh, I have heard about the. I didn't. Uh, I was going to <laughs> have a travel, but I I didn't catch the time for that. But like somehow too, when when you take it uh, out of the theater space, of course, uh, theater space performances are also always traveling somehow. But like some, that kind of connection with the with the world and with uh, this, like even you t touch really someone's hands, it's it's huge thing. Like there's a huge universe in in that action. So maybe that opens those uh, deeper universes. That kind of collaborations but mm -hmm. like it's maybe yeah good to question how to and you say that 
how to kind of deal that where you put it that it's in the, in the it's a new thing so it's not a theater and it's not a like really traveling but I see the potential <laughs> and in yeah I, I yeah. just add that uh, I I would really like to see this kind of uh, uh, trips um, like not just as a kind of uh, in festival and in this but mm. that, that it is like you know like completely random tourist comes to to <laughs> to Turku and then uh, and then they okay yes they can just uh, catch this trip yeah that it, it would be no normal or like it will be normal to, yeah exactly to that, like uh, to, to get out of our uh, our bubble that, yeah uh, Uh, well, Elvira first, and then then you over there. <laughs> okay, so I will try to formulate my question. What I'm I'm still trying to find in my mind how to do it. But anyway, first I want to say thank you. I'm sorry I missed the beginning because I was a little bit late. I was working on another project, and and uh, I felt a lot of love towards whatever you're doing. It it really came out and yeah and then uh, I really liked in your project this idea of this because what we're talking about is this con continuation and that you're in contact with the audience you keep the contact with the audience with different ways if it's with the social media or whatever it is and I would like to still, like, because you're, and you also talked about the continuation, and, and that's what we were supposed to talk about. Like, is there more ideas what you have as, as uh, producers, as artists, uh, when you've traveled around the world? Have you found different gimmicks, or ways, tricks, how to, to find the continuation and that it doesn't cut? on money because that's where it, mm -hmm. where it normally cuts is like we have something really great then the money cuts then you say okay I, I really love this so much I still try and then you try and then the money still doesn't come and then at some point you say fuck it and then it disappears and then you try and get it again and maybe it's a new audience and then you don't have the same continuation and and that's what I would like to ask is if you find different, even different than what you're working with yourself, different mm -hmm. methods. I, I'm happy to respond because I think um, the best audience is not. Do you us. want to respond to the mi mic? So, but I she's don't know, got my, my arm. Sorry, okay. not mine. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, a mic. I think uh, ah, no, <laughs> we talk about this uh, <laughs> displaced audience or this um, un audience of non-attention. It's often other artists and arts workers. Uh, in my experience, regular citizens will remember your performance for 20 years. Mm. And I think this is where, like, um, this for me is really important. I think it's great. I, I love having other people who are in the industry at our festival and in our projects. But actually our ultimate goal is to build an audience of regular citizens who this is not their profession. Because their response to performance and to participation and to magic is far greater. Like I see what 300 shows a year, like, and maybe 5% stay with me. No, I think maybe some of us can relate to this. It's not 100% good, that's for sure. <laughs> like the, but with normal citizens, just the act of being present in an audience with a performer who is present can open up many things, particularly if performance is not something that is, uh, and here I'm talking about performance. I, I, I don't know about visual arts, but performance. Uh, a really nice example is uh, okay, taking off my curator hat and putting on my touring artist hat um, uh, in a small town called Bassan de Grappa, which is in the north of Italy. Um, we have like old nonnas who like uh, with me and James have like followed, we've gone to the festival maybe three times over the last 10 years, who just will, <laughs> James will walk down the street and you'll have these nonnas who will start, you know, shouting beautiful things in Italian to him and we'll make sure that every time we're in the festival they will look for his name and they will come you know? <laughs> and I think it's that thing of like um, I don't think it's about gimmick it's about connection and it's around yeah I think it's around citizenship like normal citizens I think so often 
Uh, it's not a Finnish problem, it's a global problem, that particularly with contemporary performing arts, we are performing to each other more mm. than we're performing to mm. general audience. And that's because, uh, well, I think we, bec we have to become better at hospitality and inviting folks in. And not to sense of what we're talking about, I think it's incredibly important to talk about incredibly contemporary issues uh, in contemporary ways. But we have to find better ways of inviting people into that experience that does not make them feel stupid, yeah. that makes them be, see, be seen and heard. Um, and yeah, like, you know, when we talk about, I mean, uh, I also have a big focus on accessibility, you know, like, how do you make things radically ex accessible for everybody in society every single time? Like, that's really mm. hard. <laughs> but that, mm. like, that's our mission, like this radicality of accessibility and continuing to practice this way because you do not see instant results ever. <laughs> it has to be a long-term practice and building love and trust. And then people will, like for me, that this is that thing. If you love someone, like you show up, you show up, doesn't matter, you show up. There's trust and there's care and you feel safe. That audience comes every time. But I think this is, it's a huge investment of energy time uh, and love. Sorry. You yeah, I can uh, yeah, yeah, I can follow from that. I was already before El Elvira's question. I was thinking about this time aspect, and we've been mm. talking about slowness, but time as aspect in a kind of expanded way. How um, and been thinking about it for a while now. That instead of like uh, figuring out that we are part of some network of, of or a kind of that the ecosystem or in arts is kind of a network that we are like actively contributing in order to get like certain kind of results and connections that instead of if we think about that we are in this rhizomatic structure that we we are not even maybe aware of how these connections get like reactivated mm -hmm. and at that, what point so somehow like understanding that kind of the after effects or the reactivation might happen five years or 10 years after, and that can become at that point really meaningful um, way of like continuing the work or, or yeah, show, working with someone who you haven't worked with before. And as I'm kind of growing older, becoming, of not even becoming middle-aged, being middle-aged person, <laughs> I, and I kind of like, I can recall back that mm. some of the connections that are for me active at the moment are built 20 years ago mm. and haven't been active for decades. And as I'm also the, yeah, the festival director, I invite people back and these connections get reactivated. And I figure that there are so many other connections around that, mm -hmm. that this is like slowly building up this. And I figure, I think it's ry rhizomatic because it's, it's um, unrecognizable. Unrecogni I cannot track it down, but it's there. And it's like, uh, it's underground and it's like holding me as a practitioner. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that kind of, keep me also growing and going. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if Elvira, is, this is anyhow answered to your question, but it's more like an expansion of, of that. Mm -hmm. But I have It's not a trick or mm -hmm. a tip. I have one, I have one yeah, trick. Yeah, of course, like, I, I agree completely. <coughs> and I don't know the word rising man. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I think that it's they all the time come back. And, and, but like maybe I was thinking more of, If you find a method, what you do, then because uh, everything is always a project mm -hmm. after a project, mm -hmm. and then there's like, okay, I, I need the money, so I'll just start a new project mm -hmm. because they're not gonna give money anymore for this project. Mm -hmm. So then I need a new project, mm -hmm. and then I, sometimes I forget the old project, what was actually really good, and it's true. It might come back if it's need if it needs to come back, it will come back later. But sometimes it's like it would be nice to have just yeah. Tree? I was looking for tricks. I think there's. <laughs> the thing is, I think there's no tricks, but energy and commitment. And the thing is, you know, um, like uh, if 
Yeah, this idea of if you could, I mean, just this is an easy exercise. Last time you remember being feeling really welcomed into a theatre or a festival, you want to keep going back and chasing that feeling of love and acceptance forever. So the investment can't come afterwards. It has to happen every single time. That really investment of care and um, like with our festival, like most what I love about uh, the, the, I mean, Miradonna was there, this idea of people just feeling like they could be themselves. And this is a rare feeling that can happen within performative spaces that doesn't happen on the street all the time. But if you can create that environment, and that's even just someone really welcoming everyone walking in the door and offering a free cup of coffee. What, mm. this is an investment of 100 euros, let's say, like if we want to talk business, that will bring audiences back forever, even if the show's not that good. <laughs> but that feeling of being welcomed and accepted is so powerful, and we don't get that outside in the real world. No one, no one's... Um, it's glad, glad to meet you. <laughs> no one's, no one's uh, waiting to be uh, to give hospitality so often. So, like my tip or trick: love your audience, love every single one of them in mm. in all aspects mm. of themselves, and find ways for every single person that could be your audience to come. And in festivals, also love the performers. I think it's like it, it's a ring. Like yeah. sometimes there's festivals where. The audience are thought about, but the performers are forgotten. And if it's everybody loves everybody, yeah. then it works. Yeah, it works really well, and everyone. It's much more sustainable <laughs> to make festivals like this. Yeah. Wait a minute, because uh, but you had a new question. Yeah. Okay. So let's <laughs> let's. Uh, <laughs> but you had a, no no no. no Elvira, no. Uh, Mayu, did you have a well, comment yeah, for yeah. that? He's first. <laughs> well, but it's a comment for that or a new question. It's a comment. Okay. Comment. Yeah. Well, then. <laughs> <laughs> because he he has a new question, so let's uh, have this. Uh, uh, yeah. My name is Mayu, kind of. and um, uh, I'm happy to hear all these wonderful presentations. Because Sari, I know, have been there, and uh, I'm so excited about all these in new ways of connect, contacting, connecting with people, and um, I have an e example of meeting normal people. Mm. <laughs> Who's normal? But I've been working, <laughs> <laughs> not me, I've been working, um, now it's the fifth year in an art uh, project, fifth year, which is funded basically by the city of Helsinki, where I live. I was born here. <laughs> but anyhow, and um, we started from zero. Uh, the Helsinki city wants to s sort of encourage people within the means of art and they give a certain sum for different kinds of art, not organizations, groups. We started five years ago from zero. I live in a very, how should I say, poor and uh, suburb uh, which is free of art. We don't have anything, really. There are no theaters visiting our uh, suburb, except for the 70s when I was young, but that's another story. And we don't have a art galleries, we don't have a cafe, we don't. We have pubs and one grocery store and so on. And we are far from the center of Helsinki, far from the cultural houses as well. People don't go to the nearest cultural house, which is only three kilometers away, because they don't, they can't afford it. Mm. Traveling, six euros, 20 cents. Tickets, 20 euros. Coffee, five euros. No way. So we started from zero thinking what is possible, what's not possible. And uh, the first initiators within arts were Zodiac the Dance Theater mm -hmm. and the uh, Helsinki City Theater and so on. And uh, <laughs> how to reach people. Mm -hmm. And it was very Simple, we go to people. Mm -hmm. Let's have workshops. Let's have some meetings with people. And we sort of, um, uh, the principle is to join all these instances which are present. There is youth house, there is the church, whatever. There, are, there is the Islamic, uh, Mosque. I don't know. But then anyhow, all kinds of cultures. And we have a library 
which will be closed soon because the house will be torn down, but anyhow. And we have school, and we have this and that, and those who have never done anything together, mm -hmm. really. 45 years I've been living there. So they, we, we had a meeting. We called everybody who's interested in joining our project, whoever he, she, or they is. Uh, there are children and uh, uh, <laughs> all kinds of people who have um, uh, resources, and those who don't have, and then we started sort of working on it. What can we do? We don't have a theater space or anything, so we do it in the streets. We go to, to the church hall. We go to the tiny library. We go there, and then <laughs> one of the most uh, how say, activating things was when uh, the dance theater showed it, so they started doing workshops, mm -hmm. free movement workshops in the youth house. <laughs> Suddenly, I and some other inhabitants were in the mm, uh, station tunnel. We have tunnel performing free movement for those who come from the train. Yeah. Mm. And people were, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> what are, how can they, what are they doing? So we explain, come with us, next workshop and so on. So we started uh, some kind of a um, people's movement mm -hmm. in that oh. way. And it was fun. And it, oh, those meetings, I've been living there, but I haven't met everybody <laughs> because I'm uh, uh, not friends with all 10,000 people, let's say, like that. <laughs> and uh, I met old people, I met young people, and we, we be became friends with artists and normal people and so on. And everybody was, was welcome. And we also invited the young a um, multicolored young <laughs> gang, <laughs> which is on the station always. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so they had their own workshop, and now, now they have graffiti workshops. Mm -hmm. mm. And by that, this um, mm, suburb mm -hmm. became suddenly part warm. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was really, because the, there are yeah. poistolas, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. white. <laughs> but anyhow, Everybody started, hi, I've seen you. What are we doing next? And mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had not experienced that. There are now hundreds of people mm -hmm. uh. who are friends. Uh. And oh, oh, what's going on next and so on. And <coughs> at the moment, <coughs> this is not COVID. <laughs> Cigarettes. <laughs> and whiskey. <laughs> okay, but anyhow, at the moment we are uh, working with the Finnish Baroque Orchestra. Mm -hmm. There is a violist playing violin on this mm -hmm. little market square for those uh, drunkards. Mm -hmm. There are a lot mm -hmm. of drunkards. Mm -hmm. Everybody can enjoy it. Yeah. And we go with the whilst I go uh, reciting poems mm -hmm. in the at the grocery store, and whatever. And people know, people know, oh yeah, yeah. Now this is uh, an example of how to reach people. And one of uh, the most important is maybe that we don't have a theater space. Mm -hmm. We go to people, because I have noticed that uh, there are requirements <coughs> for people to go to theater or to church mm -hmm. meeting or whatever, they have to be sober and they have mm -hmm. to act mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. certain way mm -hmm. and they 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 are not accepted if they are different mm -hmm. but we hi mm. hello and yeah yeah Precisely. and so on so and it's I, the yeah, same principle but i'm talking anymore yeah. i just wanted yeah. to zoom out for a yeah. second and go actually this is um <laughs> how culture mm. was practiced for 60,000 years, no? This mm. relative invention of, of separating art and practicing culture. This is uh, neoliberalism at its best. Mm. If we look at our indigenous friends from around the world uh, who still hold rich culture, like uh, if I think about Australia and my friends yeah, from Wurundjeri, like, you know, they are holding culture, song, dance, poetry, mm. Mm. song lines uh, as a part of everyday life. 
No. This invention of separating culture and art making, this is our <laughs> doing. This mm -hmm. is this is this modernization mm -hmm. that removed this practicing together, the ability to see each other. I don't know whether mm. drunk or sober or old or young. This is this is a an invention that we need to undo. Yeah. Same yeah. Like, yeah. That, that that we yeah. should that practicing culture is something special. It should not be special. It should be done by all of us all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think also, you know, I think we have a lot to learn from uh, our indigenous friends from all over the world because not only did they keep our land so beautiful and thriving for tens of thousands of years, but they kept culture alive. Uh, they kept, you know, we talk about audience or connection alive for mm -hmm. literally sixty thousand mm -hmm. years. The, the, that actually, I think uh, there is a lot of that we. Uh, that we, I say we, mm. us in the room, have done to, yeah, over the last tens of thousands of years that have removed this culture and practicing culture as everyday life. Not to say that there weren't artists and specialized folks within different communities that, that held certain songs or held certain stories, mm. uh, like the artists we would call now, but everyone participated. So I just uh, I just want to say that actually when we zoom out, <laughs> like uh, this is not remark. I mean it's remarkable now, but when we think about uh, all of humanity, no, this is a relatively recent um, problem that we are engaging with. This this yeah. disconnection yeah. from each other. But Very I think short. Uh, no, yeah, I, I think Very uh, short. for him uh, because uh, money, uh, money, money, oh, money. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I know how to get it. I, I, I would actually disagree with that completely <laughs> coming from Latvia, but so we can talk about that later. Yeah, but it, like, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah it, we have a 15 one, minutes. Just one, one, one thing. Yeah. 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 I want to, yeah, well, you can say it shortly, but I want to give also <laughs> for him because he has been waiting there to, to speak and to go. <laughs> and we can have a, a continue this talking like a whole, yeah. <laughs> whole weekend of the week, but like say shortly if you. I go, no, yeah, now it's microphone yeah. is over there. Right? Hello, hello. Yeah, it's hello? not. It's just the internet. It's oh, not, yeah. <laughs> it's not for. Yeah, we it's we not can not hear you. Uh, I have two questions, if that's okay. They're kind of brief, I suppose. But the first is for uh, Lena, and then the second for Miradona. Um, so the first one is about the word sustainability, and whether you, I run an organisation in the UK that has it literally in the name, mm. but. Um, I find it like a really uncomfortable word to use because it's been kind of co-opted by kind of like capital and like kind of neoliberal systems mm. to the point where it's become like almost like meaningless. And so I always have to back it up by like, yeah, sustainable, but it's like intersectional sustainability, which is all about, in, like even you did in your speech, like the political, the cultural, the social, you know, you have to reinforce the fact that it's not just about recycling, it's about <laughs> all of those things. Yeah. And so I guess just do you feel that same kind of discomfort and whether there's alternate words we could potentially use? And then my second question to Miradonna is about the kind of, um, to give you more time to think well, you know, response, <laughs> is about the kind of like um, aspects of like openness and vulnerability and stuff. And I think, I just wonder, like, is it difficult sometimes? Or I suppose in the UK, my experience of this is, it's very much like an, a particular aspect of the arts where it's like, yeah, let's all be vulnerable and let's all kind of talk about our feelings and talk about our difficulties. But I just wonder, like, how it's approached when it's with people who aren't necessarily experienced in like being like vulnerable and like when you had those slides on the screen it made me feel like an unconscious like feeling of like like panic and kind of fear because <laughs> I was like afraid to be vulnerable because mm -hmm. I mean my like the art studio I've been sharing for the past two years is with a bunch of like hardcore punks and we don't talk about our feelings so like I just wonder <laughs> like is it's kind of not easy but it's more cohesive in people that are used to doing it, but is there a way of like approaching it for people who just the idea of being vulnerable makes them uncomfortable, as you can probably see. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Thanks, Ed. If I start and you, yeah, you, you get to think while I'm kind of trying to elaborate on this, uh, I think, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really relevant question and how the word sustainability is like overused and mm. everywhere. And at the same time, like, 
um, that's what we need to practice. Like there's no way out. Uh, like we need to, we need to change the way how we operate. Um, and um, but I've been thinking, yeah. I, like I mentioned also, we yeah cal we've been calculating our carbon footprint, and we could go on with that forever and trying to minimize and minimize and but it, and, and keep on calculating. But I think personally that that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not really that we just like pay attention to the more smallest details and we can spend our energy on like on that smallest detail but it doesn't actually make a change it makes a small change but how to shift from that into this like idea of handprint mm. and sometimes something that you do maybe doesn't have that uh, big impact in terms of the carbon footprint but it has a kind of symbolic impact that you you express the values that uh, this is actually how we uh, think and also like if you move on from that like how how can we think new thoughts or how can we understand how, how can we move on to this more systematic change where uh, it's this intersection instead of a of a narrow category in which we operate and that it's a it's a hard process. I think it kind of like requires uh, a lot of lot, lot of thinking and uh, and also the capacity to change something. Mm -hmm. And so, in that terms, we've been thinking a lot in like how where does the where how how these these new insights mm -hmm. uh, get born? Where are where do they come mm -hmm. from? And um, one, one is that, yes, there needs to be knowledge, there needs to be some information, you understand kind of where it's placed to, but then uh, there's like experience, like it has to kind of also come from that it's, it's embedded in you, you kind of experience something which uh, uh, allows those new thoughts to be born and then yeah, observing, noticing what's around you. So it's a combination. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, just to one, once more to repeat that if we just concentrate on recycling as important as it is, it's still not the solution. <laughs> I think one variation what came to, to my mind earlier already in the you mm. space, spoke about the con connections and the, to, I think what we are all doing it in a way, but like to, 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 to see it like that uh, when we when we are, for example, in residence or collaborating with some people, like how we share our connections mm -hmm. and the people with who and how how then the kind of the like for example, I was in a, in Buenos Aires and I I get to well I had one person who I knew and he introduced me to film director and I collaborated suddenly the uh, mm -hmm. Suomi Tango film thing and then I came back to. Finland, and then she asked me to host uh, mm -hmm. one cello player, Chilean cello player, who came to Finland, and I host her, him, and like kind of a, like I, I see in, in my life, and I think uh, like all we have that mm -hmm. those experiences that we have, ah, oh, maybe you could meet this person, mm -hmm. and maybe you could, and and then suddenly there's no traveling, but there's like connections mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. happening in different countries. So and I that's just understanding that there are like many resources we mm. each of us has, and if we yeah. are generous, yes, we exactly, have, like in terms of connection, in terms of references, in mm -hmm. terms of yeah. like inputs, uh, there's a lot we can share, and yeah. and that's also the sustainable way of practicing um, yeah. artist and also being uh, yeah. practicing reciprocity. Mm -hmm. So not giving to expect anything back. Mm. I think this is the most uh, important part of sustainability. Like just. The, the act of giving and knowing that it will come back, but not expecting it. No, yes. This is not yes. sustainable. And I think when we talk, of, yeah, this for me is so important not to like generosity without any mm, yeah. uh, conditions. Mm. And it's inspiring to see like when something happens, like that you have introduced some people and yeah. then it's something going on like, wow, that's like, it's, mm, mm. Mm. I agree. Mm. And then you oh, to answer. Okay, back to the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how to, yeah, vulnerability for people who don't want to be vulnerable <laughs> or at least in public. Um, yeah, I, I know what you mean and often in our performances there are also people who would normally maybe not 
to go see see even a theater show because, for example, when we did the in new performance. Turku, we were in wastewater treatment plant, which meant that all the engineers from the wastewater treatment plant, they came to our mm. show, they were <laughs> the first ones. So there are different steps, like um, uh, we gave them a little like form where you fill your answers. And like I said that this is private, no one will watch your answers. And then it, the questions are going like, what is your name today? First question. Second question, what are you thinking about nights? And then there are some kind of like, you can put a little uh, uh, check box, like thinking about the moon, uh, candy, uh, then secrets, something else, dot, dot, mm -hmm. dot, what? Mm -hmm. So you can like uh, adjust yourself mm -hmm. and you don't need to shout your private life <laughs> in public, uh, not at all. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, because I'm also afraid of like, how to say, because I have the circus background, so I'm like um, traumatized by all this. Like, ah, is there any volunteers ca come mm -hmm. up the stage? So <laughs> this is like <laughs> the opposite of what we do. <laughs> like, like we actually, like uh, when you, it's like meeting a new, I, I would again come to meeting a new friend. Like it depends on the person mm -hmm. who you are meeting. Like would you ask the first question like, what are you afraid of? Or uh, is it like, <laughs> do you like tomatoes? <laughs> like this, like reading the situation and not forcing, never forcing, just giving space if someone wants and then someone can like, but not try to, okay, one volunteer, we need some. <laughs> this, no, 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 this one, no. Yeah. In the work that you were explaining, yeah. I think it's like gentle engagement because yeah. it also happens that we are moving together there in the space and mm. you're kind of like, being like becoming part of it uh, without even noticing that you're part of it. So, yeah. so but still, yeah, the vulnerability is there because you are there as a participant, but yeah. without being forced, like you said. Yeah, yeah, and I think that comes also back to about your question, and I think it's like being seen and heard that makes people come back mm. to your shows, because if your voice is there and you are having maybe a transformative experience, that can also happen. And uh, this is something that you can't measure how many seats are in the audience. Like, this is what we are often asked, mm. like how many people were there? And I'm like, okay, so there were 10 people, but it lasted like four hours. So I'm like, sometimes I actually, uh, like we try to calculate the amount spent with one person. <laughs> Some like, how, like you can't, I don't know, you can't calculate this. Uh, or at least I can't maybe so. Well, the impact of shows, yeah, like or changing someone's one life one. forever. It's like, it's the best ever. Mm. No, it's not. Mm. I think we actually know, uh, it's two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it has been going so fast <laughs> this time. And I think it would, would be good to have like a one cla class something and then continue but mm. okay yes yes you can if you have a yeah mm. because and also i i say like you had uh, things to come there so yes <laughs> yeah in, in the 80s in finland we had a big different a big change happening in the school system mm -hmm. that before that uh, now we have writing we have uh, drawing painting and we have music what everybody's taught in the school. And, and if you're lucky, if you're living in a big town, you actually have very good teachers and you actually can have the possibility to get culture. But it's still, it's like in the 80s, they made a difference. Before the 80s, it was like kind of, kind of a nationalistic thing that everybody was taught. Every, every kid was like introduced into the world of art. And in everybody, like gymnastic would be this, kind of mm -hmm. dancing thing and, and you would make sure that everybody somehow involved with art because it's like 
part of the culture. And then in the 80s, they made this change where like only some specific talented children will be mm. taken into the world of art. And it, it's kind of question of ideology, but mainly a question of also money. Mm. Like, and normally these are kids who come already from academic or art background families who are going to get this path. Mm. And of course, there's a lot of exceptions also, but, but this is how I mm. think it went. And it, it, in the 80s, it was a big big change, but then about uh, what you were talking about, uh, also building trust and... Okay, this is like an anecdote, but because Lena is here, she was in, you were in a, in a class called Crossing Borders, and, and it was the biggest uh, teaching, learning for me about, like, anything can happen on the stage. And I also had experiences would your performances where I had to actually do exactly what you said. And as I think it's one of the only experience that you don't trust the performer, that you actually have to admit that I seriously don't trust the performer and I feel danger, mm. but not only for myself, for others as well. So I had to actually argue one performer and, and he argued me back and we would like, almost fist fighting on the stage. <laughs> like, no, I don't, I don't, but, but it went like quite, it was the guy who would, uh, IRA, IRA. And uh, was Andre going, Stitt, yeah. uh, the former with the big, like, plot. Yeah, I think yeah. the problem was that the space was so small. He, he, yeah. he was burning things, he was, it was blood, but, but uh, it was glass thrown on the That's audience. And then you. when he took, mm -hmm. like, after, like, like uh, ducking under glass and mm. and blood thrown on you and and all these things and then he lit a match then it went too far like he he put uh, he put benzene on the stage and then he lit some ma ma match mm. and then I said no this is going too far yeah he was one of our teachers <laughs> really oh, no really yeah. Uh, yeah. Then, okay. yeah, back then, yeah. Mm. Okay. So, so that's the education. <laughs> <laughs> I knew a bunch of yeah. your teachers, and I, I really enjoyed your class. I, I'm so happy yeah. we were there at the same time, but, but yeah, mm. it was great. Cool. Um, I, well, now I think that um, clo watch it, uh, it's uh, four o'clock, so if, if anyone has to run, so now is the time to run, but let's just try to to kind of, uh, well, we can't end this. This is like a continuing. Well, well if there's luckily you don't summer. need to end this. Yes. You yes. can put December 14th in your diary from 6 p.m. <laughs> right here. We will have a showing uh, from the Saudi residents. So it's free and open to everyone. Don't know what we're going to do or how we're going to do it. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. we've just arrived in the residency, but we can meet again here in the city on December 14th at 6 p.m. Okay, and there is a possibility to also talk and, and see, we see will, you soon. We will talk something. to you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, there will be there will be some yeah. arts. Yeah. There will be some practice. Um, uh, and of course, if you're in the area, you can always stop by and say hello uh, at yeah. the residency as well. That's that's great. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's a good because then we have a like kind of a continuity. And uh, anyway, these topics and this will continue. And yeah. Let's be generous with our all of, well, well our ourselves <laughs> and our connections. Thank you very much for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you as guests and also for you and uh, for you. Thank you too. <laughs>